welcome to the Small Business Made Simple podcast, brought to you by socialmediaandmarketing.com.au. Being in business is never easy, but it can be simple, or at least simpler. Join me, your host Jen Donovan, every week where we focus on marketing, social media and working towards simplifying your business. You with me? Let's do this. Gonna dream it, dream it, beat the someone out there listening. Everyone's got a voice to give and it's time I heard you whistling cause there's no point at all. Oh, oh, oh. And dream and small. Why, hey there, my fabulous listener. Welcome to episode 203 of the Small Business Made Simple podcast. I appreciate you lending me your ears today. As usual, I know you have lots of choices out there and I really do appreciate you making my podcast one of them. I'm a little bit excited that my podcast has been nominated for uh, or is a finalist for the Oz Mumpreneur Awards. So the Small Business Made Simple podcast is up for an award. So I will keep you intact with that. I've recently had the judging done so fingers crossed my podcast can take out that award of course if you're enjoying this podcast and I'd love you to take a screenshot and share it on your socials and tag me at Jen Donovan that would be super cool to get to know you a little bit as well and maybe even drop me a dm um, on one of the platforms so we can connect a little bit further of course the show notes for this podcast will be at socialmediaandmarketing.com.au slash two zero Before we get started on today's episode, how did you go with last week's episode? Uh, I had Jane Vandermeer on. Um, Of course, she's a fashion stylist and I loved that episode. And I know that a few of you who have already reached out to Jane. um, So I appreciate you reaching out to Jane and saying hello. If you haven't listened to that episode, then flick back to episode 203 when you finish this one, of course. Um, And hear my conversation with Jane. There's lots of gold over there. Um, It was all about how fashion and business actually connects and it's a little bit or it's probably a lot deeper than you give it credit for. But anyway, on to today's episode. Today we are talking video and especially video you can make on your smartphone. We all know, or if you're listening to this podcast, you should know that video content is super important when it comes to our marketing. Video is king would just like to say that podcasting is the queen, but video is still king of content. Video has been king of content since social media was born and it's still king of content. And we all have a smartphone and therefore we all have the ability to do more video. And if you're thinking that I'm wrong and you can't do more video and because you've got a smartphone doesn't mean you can do more video, then I'm hoping this episode will convince you differently. I'm hoping that you will listen to this episode and you will get either the courage or the know-how or the tools you need to be- make more video. That's all I'd like you to do is make more video. Of course, videos that you can do can be storytelling videos like who, what, when, why and how. Um, They can be informative videos. They can be educational videos. They can be entertaining videos. Um, And of course, they can be videos to create sales, which couldn't be any of the above. You you can create sales by being entertaining, by educational, by storytelling, etc, etc. But a good video done on a smartphone or wherever has to have excellent audio. There's a couple of things that, you know, videos have to have. And there's some of the tips and tricks I'm going to go through on this podcast. But good video has to have good audio, has to have good lighting and natural lighting is your cheapest. Yay for the sun. Um, It needs captions. So video, almost 100% of videos you do should have captions and also maybe a sprinkling of editing depending on, you know, what sort of a video you've done. Maybe you need a little bit of editing or maybe you need a lot of editing. But they're what make up the basis of a good video. Quality of the audio is probably one of the most important things other than content, of course, but people will sit through videos that have bad lighting, but almost no one will sit through a video that has bad audio. Using earphone, like the earphone speakers that came with your smartphone or AirPods or the equivalent of AirPods for, um, 
people who aren't iPhone users or even a lapel microphone will just ensure you have a clear voice um, and help you also to block out the sounds that you don't want recorded on your video, which in my case, often birds and sheep and farm equipment. <laughs> but, there, you know, again, audio is one of those things you really do need to concentrate on. Um Sound is probably one of the most important things. And if you get the sound right, then you are probably three quarters of the way there as far as having a video that people will actually sit there and consume the content for. I think it's important to think about um, whether you want the camera in landscape or portrait as well with your phone. Um, this might be, to, of course, be determined by where you are going to play the video, where you want the video to sit as to whether or not you have it uh, landscape or portrait. So you might need to do a little bit of investigation with this as far as a rec before you hit the record button. Um, most videos that I would do would be uh, portrait but of course you know landscape is definitely an option as well um, lighting like I said earlier natural light is best so stand near a window or get outside or in a well-lit area to record your video you can of course always use ring lights and ring lights are readily available for a few dollars or all the way up to a couple of hundred dollars, but they are a really good idea. I have a really big freestanding ring light, but I have to say the one that I use most is the small one that clips to my iPhone. So it's just a small, I don't know how big it is, 10 centimeters if I look at it now. Um, and I think I bought it for a few dollars from either Kmart or my local po post office. I really can't remember. But, you know, that's the one that I probably use the most. My great big one I probably only use for recording longer videos. But if you watch TikTok or if you watch Instagram Reels and you want to do dancing and pointing and things like that, that and you don't want to be constricted or restricted, I should say, from having a phone in your hand, then maybe a freestanding light is a good idea. I know my ring light actually has a place for the phone as well and I can use, um, I can kind of operate both from there. Of course, editing the video is where some people do come unstuck though. It's kind of like what tools can I use and what do I need in order to edit the video? Firstly, can I say though that most videos won't need editing. If you are editing out parts of the video where, for instance, um, you would do and say that thing in real life, like if we were having a face-to-face -face conversation or, you know, I met you in the supermarket and you would say what you're saying on video, then don't edit it out because you think it's not perfect. It's authentically you. If that is the way you speak, then that is simply the way you speak. You know, one of the biggest mistakes you can make is, you know, trying to edit videos to not naturally be you. But of course, you know, sometimes we need to edit videos to make them shorter because we want a 60 second video for our Instagram stories. And, you know, the video is like, I don't know, 112 seconds or 72 seconds or something like that. So I, I get that editing is something you have to do, but don't edit it out parts just because it's naturally who you are. People will naturally be attracted to that in you because that's that's who you are. Um, so don't ever feel like you have to edit a video. Um, but if you do need to edit video, there's some really great apps out there like iMovie, um, InShot, Canva, Splice. They're like, I guess, apps or um, websites that you can do editing on. These tools aren't expensive. But can I just say... If you are using an app that does have a subscription for a few dollars a year, like might be $30 a year or $5 a year, buy it. It might be totally worth you spending and investing a little bit of money in that technology. Most apps that you pay for, they actually make your life simpler and easier. And that's what you're paying for. The free version does this, but it becomes something you have to work around and something a little bit more complicated. So really, if you can pay for an app that will make your business life simpler or easier, do it. It is well worth the investment. And as far as videos go, um, as far as timing goes, your first five seconds are, of course, super crucial in your video. You don't want to waste those crucial first seconds by saying things like, hey there, everyone, I'm Jen Donovan and blah, blah, blah. 
Because remember, people don't care who you are until they know what's in it for them. You're much better off using a hook at the start, a hook in the first five seconds to get these people to keep watching um, and not to scroll by or not to click backwards out. So maybe you're... um, you know, rather than introducing yourself in the first five seconds, it's kind of like video content in 30 seconds. How do you do it? Are you keen to learn? Like get that head nod test going. And then you can say, oh, cool. Well, I'm Jen Donovan. I blah, 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 blah. Like, you know, get them in that first five seconds or something like if you hate video with a passion, get that head nod test. People are like, yeah, I hate video with a passion. What do I need to know? What have you got for me? Yeah, How many times do you click that end button when you're watching a YouTube video, uh, like, you know, on an ad? So you've searched a YouTube video and there's an ad before you get to see it. And as soon as you can click that ad to make it go away, you do. And do you ever think to yourself, I have no idea what that ad was about? Like the people just never got to the crust of what they had paid for before I was able to click out. I see it so often. People just miss the mark. You know, the first five seconds, the first 15 seconds, these are super important for our main messages and main topics and how you can help the person that you are targeting with this particular video. Even if it's not an ad, you should not waste those first few seconds. Um, As far as topics and messages go, because I just talked about, you know, making sure you had the main messages and topics in the first five, 15 seconds, um, know the platform that you're putting the video on is probably the biggest hint. So understand, you know, what platform you're going on, because that will somewhat determine the topics and the messages that you're going to put out there. Um, You know, as far as timing goes, uh, YouTube, for instance, go for your life, (laughs) make it as long as you want, well, sort of. Um, But something like Instagram stories, you can do between 15 and 60 seconds. Um, Facebook, really any length. But again, you know, stories, they have that um, 15 to 60 seconds. Um, TikTok, well, that's just constantly changing. I really don't know. It's at least up to a couple of minutes now and it appears to be depending on who you are and what you have as to how long your content can go. I'm sure if you are much better at TikTok than I am, you would know the answer to that a little bit more. But TikTok was certainly 60 seconds and now there are videos on there that are certainly a lot longer than that. I'd say it's a couple of minutes by now, up to three from memory. Um, understand that if you are going to do a live video on a social media platform, then my five second rule probably doesn't apply to you because by the time you click live and get people on, it could be 20, 30 seconds into you being on that platform. So you've got, if you're going to go live, you have to be quite strategic in how do you keep the early birds on there and wait for others to come on before you deliver your amazing content that you want to get out there in a live video. So just be very aware that, you know, when I said the first five seconds, the first 15 seconds with live video kind of doesn't apply because there's every chance when you press record that people will take at least a few seconds to come on to watch you live. Um, Of course, you know, like I said, as far as video goes, you can go live, you can pre-record something, um, you can have stories, you can have reels, uh, you know, you can pre-record something. But a lot of the video that you do, again, will be skewed and swayed by your target audience and, and knowing how they best interact with you as the business owner. If they are the type of people who love to watch stories on Instagram or Facebook, do more stories. If they are the type of people who love to watch reels, do more reels. If they are the people who like to sit down and watch long form content, do lives with them, do pre-recorded longer content for them. It really, you really do need to know your ideal client in order to get this video thing right. Or of course, test and measure the old marketing adage of test and measure. Of course, if you've never done video, then you don't have any statistics to go off off or if you rarely do video, you don't know how your ideal client best interacts with you via video. So you do need to do that research and you do need to do that experimenting in order to find out whether they like stories, reels, lives, pre-recorded, whatever that looks like.
And just about any content that you do, um, again, like I said, you know, about 100%, I think, 100% of the con- video content that you do should have captions. Captions are important for people who listen with sound off, but are also important for people who need them for communication pr- purposes. The people that perhaps, you know, have trouble with hearing or, you know, that sort of aud- auditory, I guess, auditory um, problems. So you do need captions. Most platforms um, will automatically do captioning for you, but there are other platforms like rev.com or otter.ai or even an app like Mix Captions can transcribe your videos for you. Um, I use Mixed Captions quite often. I'm pretty sure I've paid for the app that transcribes videos, but Rev is a paid service. I'm pretty sure Otter.io does a certain amount of transcribing for you for free. Personally, I find Otter, I have to make lots of changes. Maybe it's the way I speak. Um, But lastly, you know, we've talked a little bit about the tech, but lastly, let's have a bit of a discussion about the content for the video because you know we want um it to have good audio and good lighting and trans you know uh, transcription and all of that but we also need to have some pretty good content 95 percent of the videos you create should have a strategy or a plan behind them in other words you should know what the outcome of doing the video is for your audience Uh, you know this just going on and pressing record and just talking with no plan it might work it might not work for me I would say more than likely it won't work Um, so having some idea of what it is that you want to say you can write notes you can do sticky notes you can do dot points or you can just think about it in your head before hitting record and think okay I just really want to talk about this particular point but you should never or really hardly ever hit the record button without a thought as to what you are going to do or what you are going to say because you are serving your people, your community. And so what are you serving up to them? You need to make it valuable. These people are busy people, you know, make their time spent with you valuable. Again, depending on what platform you choose um, and what the length of the video is, um, will determine, of course, what content you can put out there. For short, sharp videos such as, you know, 15 to 90 second videos, you've probably only got one good point to make. Um, More points mean longer videos. So just have one really great point that you want to hammer home on a short video, press record and make that point. And of course, have a really strong call to action. So one point, one call to action makes a really good, short, sharp, engaging video. If you don't like yourself on video, then I would say in the most polite, the most friendliest way that I can possibly say on my podcast, I would say to you, it's not about you. It's about your audience. And if you show up on video, how you show up in real life, If I met you at a networking event or the pub or the supermarket, then you can show up on video because that's all people are expecting. They're just expecting you. They're not expecting perfection or somebody else. They're expecting you. And if video is something that you really do struggle with, then pull out your smartphone, press record and just start talking to it. If you make a mistake, don't press stop, don't press pause, just keep talking until you really feel like you've got your point made, that you're really quite comfortable and it might take five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, two minutes, whatever it takes. You don't have to do anything with this video. When you press stop, you can delete it straight away. But there's something about that whole practice makes perfect that makes us better at things that we struggle with. And if you're struggling with video there's every chance you're struggling with the process of the video of watching yourself or looking at yourself rather than the editing or, you know, rather than the lighting and things like that. So it's just important to practice even if you don't do anything with those videos. And, you know, when I say practice makes perfect, in no way are people expecting perfect. So stop trying to be perfect. Like I said, just show up like you, like you would if I met you in real life. And the reason why you can't, you know, you have to stop thinking that I can't do it because it's not perfect is 
perfect for you is not perfect for me and perfect for me isn't perfect for the next person. So you'll never be perfect. We just need to stop trying to be perfect. So with all that in mind, what do you do with the information that you've heard on the podcast today? Well, firstly, you need to choose a platform where your ideal client hangs out. Choose your form of video, live, real, story, etc., etc. Start to list down all the points, all the information that you could share on videos that are between 30 and 90 seconds. And then from that list, choose one. Make some simple notes, gather your thoughts, get yourself in a place with good lighting and, you know, have good sound and click record. Lives might seem scary, but if you can, push yourself to do a live. The reason why I like to push people into doing lives um, is because there's nothing you can do about it. Once you've pressed that live button, you will stumble, you will um, you will ah, uh, you will look at your notes, you will do all those things, but you're live. There's nothing you can do about it. Sometimes if we don't do these things live and push ourselves outside our comfort zone, we are on the hamster wheel of, oh, I just need to edit that. I just need to do this. I just need to do that. And, you know, people who just, 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 just never end up doing anything. So if you can push yourself to do more lives and just get over that icky feeling, then I think it will do you the world of good as far as video goes. It's only 60 seconds of your life. And you know what? Once the live video is finished, you can delete it. You don't even have to leave it up there. But of course, you've done a live and someone just may have seen it. But be you, be real. If you have to look at your notes, look at your notes. Um, you know, No one's expecting perfection. One of the simplest ways that I do video is through an Instagram story. So I do four of them and that, of course, makes 60 seconds. So I'll pick up my phone, uh, go to Instagram stories, press record and just talk for 60 seconds. And then once they're live, I go back to Instagram stories and I click the more button in stories and then I click save story, which saves all 15 second all four 15 second videos and they're on my phone now. So then I upload them into my app that I have called Splice, which stitches them all together. And therefore I have a 60 second video now all stitched together, which I can repurpose onto other platforms. Captions are done because I've done them in Instagram. I can use a filter if I want because Instagram has the best filters ever. And I've got a one minute video to repurpose onto other platforms pretty simple. Yeah, maybe, maybe not. But anyway, that's one of the ways that I do video and then repurpose them. I really hope these hints, tips and tricks have been handy for you today. But basically, do more video. If you do video now, do more video. <laughs> Hashtag sorry, not sorry. If you have other apps and tools that you use for video though and you're listening to this and you're screaming at me going, what about this one, Jen? Head into my Like-Minded Business Owners Facebook group and tell us all about your secret video source. Share the knowledge with my community and with your fellow small business owners. I know that they would appreciate it. If you're not already a member of the Like-Minded Business Owners Facebook group, then go join. But that is it for another episode of the Small Business Made Simple podcast. I will see you next week for episode 204. And I have like the biggest guest next week. Well, actually, a guest from the biggest organization next week. I'm super excited to share episode 205 with you. So make sure you tune into that. It's a bit of a aha moment for me in my podcasting life. So I can't wait to share that with you. But in the meantime, if we're not hanging out on social, let's get social on social. You can find me on Instagram, Facebook, and of course, my favorite LinkedIn. But whatever you do, remember my small business peep. As my opening song says, there is no point in dreaming small. No time like the present. Tell it like you feel it, say it proud, be true, and let us see you for the star that you are. No point in dreaming small. I would like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land, the Yorta Yorta people, on which I record this podcast and conduct my business today, and pay my respects to their elders. 
past and present. I extend this respect to the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people here with us today as well.